Now, last night, Checkpoint brought you the story of a family, including a young disabled boy in a wheelchair, who've been living in a South Auckland garage for six months because of a lack of suitable housing. Maria, her seven-year-old son, Jeresiah, who has cerebral palsy, and his sister, who has epilepsy, share a double bed in the garage attached to a granny flat that is used by four generations of the whānau. The family's on the housing waiting list, and after Checkpoint got involved, their priority rating went up four spots. The Associate Minister, Chris Farfoy, who has responsibility for public housing, he came on the programme last night and said MSD had apologised to the family and he was asking them to contact the family today and expedite the search for appropriate accommodation. But this is just one family and there are currently 900 people waiting to get into a modified state house. Joining me now is the Disability Rights Commissioner, Paula Ter- uh, Tessarero, thank you for joining me, Commissioner. Is this good enough, this case? Kia ora, Lisa. Um, look, no, it's not. I mean, it's fantastic to see that government ministers have intervened in this particular case to expedite situations for this family. But this case is by no means an isolated one, and it is illustrative of the sort of situation that disabled people and their families can face, because we really have, as a country, for a very, very long period of time, for decades, we've neglected universal design and uh, creating and building accessible homes. So while ministers have intervened in this case, it doesn't solve the issue for other families with disabled family members who are living in similar conditions while they wait for a suitable home. And I don't think many New Zealanders would find that sort of situation acceptable. So as a country, have we failed people living with disability when it comes to housing? We certainly have not done good enough, Lisa. So... Uh, the right to access a home is a, you know, it's one of the fundamental human rights that successive governments over the years have signed up to a, a number of international commitments. And there's been a long standing shortage of accessible housing stock for decades. The uh, right to housing or housing um, accessible issues is one of the top issues for disabled New Zealanders. And it's one of those issues which is um, coming to me with increasing volume and the stories that I hear are completely unacceptable. Now, What kind of things do you hear? What kind of things are you hearing? um, I really hear that it's very difficult for people to find accessible homes. It's very difficult to... um, Uh, get movement on greater targets for universal design. So universal design is is when you build properties to meet the needs of the greatest number of people. So when we think about a country like ours, we've got an ageing population, 24% of the population are disabled and we have families with young children. If you build with those universal design principles in mind, then you can create a better outcome for Everyone, And so the sort of situations that I hear are, um, you know, bearing in mind that there's a significant portion of disabled people who are on low incomes and disabled children who live in poverty. What I hear is that those who are renting find it very difficult to have landlords, um, uh, for the most part, modify their homes. And those who are on waiting lists for houses through Kaianga Ora Um, you know, do report situations where they're waiting for some time um, because of a lack of accessible housing. Have you had a talk to the ministers recently about this issue? Yes, I have. And look, ministers have been very receptive and have signalled a commitment to making some improvements. I think the thing that I will continue to be calling for, though, is to lift the 15% target that Kaianga Ora have around uh, universal design. I think we need to be far more ambitious as a country. What's the right number, do you reckon, as a percentage? Sorry to interrupt, but what what would your goal be? Well, you know, look, I'm a 100% person. Um, I think you you shoot for the stars, but at least we should be able to um, meet the demand. So the ministry... Um, doesn't currently record how many houses are fully accessible, but if there are 900 people waiting 
for transfer to get a modified state house. And at the very least, we should be building um, to, to um, demand. But I think, you know, at the end of the day, if we accept that um, housing is a fundamental human right and every New Zealander has right to housing, then um, I would set the target much higher. And look, it's really so what, 50%? 50%, would that be reasonable? Um, I, don't, I think it's about having a really solid commitment and there's not probably not a perfect percentage as I say I would would um, probably go higher I think it is about looking at what's fair and reasonable but 15% is a, a small portion of mm. the housing stock we had a visit um, earlier this year from uh, a United Nations expert on housing and she delivered a report which described the New Zealand housing situation as a significant human rights crisis. And she said it particularly impacted on Māori, Pacific, single parents and disabled people. And, you know, so here we have an international expert who is um, you know, very familiar with what happens around the world. And she cites the situation uh, in New Zealand as a significant human rights crisis. So are we, country, and, are we currently breaching people's human rights as a country by not having reasonable access to uh, appropriate housing for the disability sector? So for disabled people, we are, we are most certainly not meeting mm-hmm. our commitments to ensuring that uh, disabled people have the right to a decent home. And, so we are breaching you know, their human rights then? Oh, well, absolutely. And I, I think, you know, these are systemic issues, um, Lisa, and it's not, you know, it's not just about the house itself. It's it's thinking about, you know, the transport systems to the house, the infrastructure in the cities that we build. And, you know, we, we're not really a very accessible country. Uh, we like to think that we are, but actually we fall short in a number of areas for disabled New Zealanders. And on the, the housing fact- front... Sorry to interrupt, but the fact that Kainga Order doesn't even record the number of houses it has that are fully accessible to a wheelchair, does that not tell you that they are not placing significant stock in the issue if they can't even bother to record the number of houses? Oh, I absolutely uh, agree we, that, that things need to be better there. There needs to at the least be an audit of the accessible housing stock, so you know what is available. Um, LifeMark, which is a, a company that specialises in universal design, estimates that 1% to 2% of New Zealand's housing stock is accessible, yet one in six people require some form of modification to their home. Now, with an ageing population, you know you can expect that that situation will, will rise. And we've got a fantastic opportunity, ironically, coming through COVID with um, increased you know, investment in infrastructure and housing to really put disabled people front and centre and really make a solid commitment to build houses with universal design. It future-proofs those houses. It's far cheaper to do it at the start than retrofit. And it actually means that disabled people have the same choice and can exercise their rights alongside every other New Zealander. Thank you for joining us this evening. That's the Disability Rights Commissioner, Paula Tessarero, uh, joining us on the issue, well, really, of accessible housing and the fact that there simply is not enough of it. This comes from the story we did last night about our family living in a garage. They'd been there for six months. And just an update, Mum Maria has confirmed that she has been contacted by MSD today, as promised by the Associate Housing Minister, Chris Farfoy. She is still working through options with MSD and they're looking for a solution. We will keep you up to date.